In this video, we're going to discuss the basic differentiation rules. So first, we'll start by letting y be equal to f of x. And so recall, there's a couple different ways to denote the derivative of this function. So one way is y prime. Another way is f prime of x. Another way is simply dy dx. And you could also even do df dx. So in the notation that follows, we're going to use this notation here. Okay. So the first rule says if we take the derivative with respect to x, so d dx means take the derivative with respect to x, of a constant function, what do we get? Well, let's think about it. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So if you were to graph a constant function, say c, it's a horizontal line. So if you pick any point on this line and you draw a tangent line, you get the same line. So the derivative is the slope of this line. Well, horizontal lines have a slope of 0, therefore this derivative is 0. So the derivative of a constant is 0. It may sound silly, but let's do a simple example. Say we have f of x equals 2. And we're asked to find the derivative of this function. Well, all we do is we write f prime of x. And the answer is 0. So the derivative of a number is always 0. Super, super important rule. The second formula is extremely important. It's so important, it's given a name. It's called the power rule. So power rule. So the power rule says if you take the derivative with respect to x of x to a power, so x to the n, what you do is you just put the n in the front. So you put the n in the front, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So you write n minus 1. Okay, that's called the power rule. The power rule. Let's do a simple example. So say we have uh, the derivative with respect to x of x cubed, of x cubed. So this means take the derivative with respect to x of x cubed. So you put the 3 in the front, so you get 3x, then you just subtract 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. Boom, there it is, we're doing calculus, right? Let's do another one. d dx of x to the fourth. So you put the 4 in the front, you get an x, you subtract 1, so you get 3. Boom, that's it. So that's the power rule. Put the number in the front and subtract 1. The next rule says if we have a constant times a function of x, um, the constant can hang out. So say we have d dx of c times some function of x that we'll assume is not constant. Or even if it's constant, I think it'll still work. This is c times the derivative of f. Yeah, even if it's constant, it'll work. Because if f is constant, its derivative is 0, right? So everything makes sense, right? Because you get constant times constant, which is constant, so life is good. So very powerful formula. It basically says constants hang out. So here's an example. Say we have f of x equals 4x to the fifth. Okay, so we take this derivative. So f prime of x. And I'm using different notation just to show you that you could write the ddx or you can write f and then write f prime. Whatever, whatever works. So you put the 5 in the front. The 4 just hangs out. So you do 5 times 4. So it's 20. x. And you subtract 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. So again, 5 times 4 is 20. And you subtract 1 and you get 4. So we use this rule, right? The 4 was the c. So it kind of just like stays back there and just kind of uh, hangs out. All right, um, then we have, let's look at the derivatives of some trig functions. Let's look at the derivatives of some, of some trig functions. So we have the derivative of sine. That's equal to cosine. So just totally worth memorizing, right? Totally worth memorizing. The derivative with respect to x of cosine is equal to negative sine. 
Okay, a little bit harder to remember this one. The derivative with respect to x of, uh, let's do tangent next. That's uh, another common function. This one is secant squared. So you might say, oh, I'm never going to memorize that. Don't worry, you will. Uh, you know, if other people can learn calculus, you can learn calculus. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Like, you will know it uh, after you do uh, lots of problems. Then we have the harder ones. So the derivative with respect to x of secant, that one is secant tangent. Secant tangent. That one's not so bad. And the really uncommon ones are the ones for cotangent and cosecant. So the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared x. And the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So there's a couple tricks. Let me pause here and let you catch up if you're writing this down. Um, there's a couple tricks to memorize these. Um, I don't use this trick, but here's one that someone told me once. If you take the derivative of anything and it starts with a C, you're going to have a negative sign. Check it out. Look, cosine has a C. Boom, there's a negative. Pretty cool. Cotangent has a C. Boom, there's a negative. Cosecant has a C. Boom, there's a negative. So that's kind of cool. Um, how do I do it? I just memorize them. Um, <laughs> the derivative of sine is cosine. That one's easy. This is the annoying one. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. This is the one that causes constant mental anguish. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Pretty easy to memorize. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. And then these are weird. Uh, derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Derivative, derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. Notice that these, these cunt functions, secant and cosecant, appear in their own derivatives. Look, see, the derivative of secant, secant shows up. The derivative of cosecant, cosecant shows up. And when you take the derivative of like cotangent and tangent, you get those, those cunt functions again, right? The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So there is some type uh, of pattern um, that you can use. Um, that's it for now. In the next uh, video, we'll look at some more important rules and we'll do examples uh, using these trig functions.